Good evening and welcome to our combined Christmas carol service in the parishes of Long Ashton, Barragurney and Flaxbourton. Members of all three communities have contributed in a variety of ways to this evening's worship. It is a really wonderful display of the gifts and talents of many people. But our service is not complete without you. And so we encourage you to enter into the spirit of this community event by singing along at home. Throughout these past weeks of Advent, we have been remembering those who went before us, who looked forward faithfully over centuries to the day when God would send his Messiah, a chosen king to initiate a rule of justice and peace over all the world. Tonight, we remember that in Jesus Christ, that King came, and he is still here, Emmanuel, God with us, God among us, God close to us, wherever we may be. This is good news, outstandingly good news for all people in all places. We rejoice to welcome him, and he rejoices to welcome each of us as we draw near in worship. So wherever you are this evening, whatever you bring with you, hopes, joys, sorrows, fears, whomever you remember with thanks and whomever you grieve all the more sharply at this time of year, whatever you celebrate and whatever you struggle with, please feel welcome in the name of Christ. Know that God is near. Hear his story again. Believe that he came for you and remains with you always. And so as we begin, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen.
from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in the darkness have seen great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now the light is shining on them. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will, con will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice. From now until the end of time, the Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the waters will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Now Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us.
A reading from the Gospel according to St Luke. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
the shepherds and the angels. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields to take care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom with he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once upon a time, someone sat down and worked out how much sugar Father Christmas will consume on Christmas Eve when delivering presents if he eats every treat left out for him in just one country. And that country happened to be Ireland. The calculation is complicated. But it's thought that on that one night, in that one country, Father Christmas will consume 51,643 kilograms of sugar. That's one massive sugar rush. What a huge weight for the reindeer to pull. I'm surprised there's any room on the sleigh for presents. If you don't think that's good for Father Christmas, then just leave him whiskey, which doesn't contain any sugar at all. We love sugar. The world is predicted to get through 172 million tonnes of it in 2020, although that's actually 2 million tonnes less than last year. However, there's a significant spike in sugar consumption at Christmas. Chocolate and mince pies, Christmas cake and figgy pudding, all the sweetmeats we treat ourselves with. And perhaps I shouldn't be encouraging all this sweetness, especially for those of us like me who haven't had much chance to get out for exercise this year. But there's one piece of Christmas confectionery that tells us a little about what we're really celebrating during this season. 
Have you ever wondered why it is traditional to hang candy cane from your Christmas tree? The story goes that a couple of hundred years ago, a German choir master wanted to give his youngest choristers a treat to keep them quiet when the minister was preaching a very long and boring sermon at the midnight service. Giving sweets during worship wasn't really allowed, but the choir master had a cunning plan. Turn it into a teaching aid and he might get away with it. He asked a local confectioner to create a coloured candy stick curved at one end. And here's one I prepared earlier. Thought we needed a large sized prop for you to see it all. So before the service began, he handed out the candies, giving the, out the sticks with the curve at the bottom. He told the choir that he was giving them the letter J. Or is it J? I can't tell from here. And that's the initial letter in Jesus' name. This was a reminder that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. This was the reason why everyone was in church and everyone was celebrating. The white stripes on the candy gave a clue about the time of year when Jesus was born. Winter, when the days are dark, cold and icy, when snow covers the ground. There are also red stripes on the candy. Like the red ribbon around a Christingle orange, they are a hint that Jesus gave everything to help others, even his own life, his own red blood. We like giving presents at Christmas. Jesus gave the pre best present of all, himself. And that is often the best present we can give. Not diamonds, or a new phone, or a new car, or a new drone, just ourselves. Smiling, helping, caring, listening, and spending time with each other. Some candy cane, not these, but some, also has a green stripe. Green is for leaves and grass, the beauty and wonder of nature. It reminds us that Jesus gave the presence of himself, not just to us, but to the whole world, to every corner of creation. And that the greenness of this earth should be precious for each one of us. What gift can we give to the earth this Christmas? How can we care for and protect the land we live on? Turn the candy up that way and it looks like a shepherd's crook. This is a tool a shepherd uses to pull sheep out of danger. It keeps them on the right path. Jesus talks about himself as our good shepherd, looking after us, drawing us out of danger and back into the flock. But this way up, the candy cane also looks like a walking stick. One of the strongest messages coming through from our carol service readings is that while Jesus offers his love to everyone, it is first and foremost for those who are weak and struggling, tottering through life, finding it hard and difficult. Jesus prioritises the poorest, least important in society, the ones everyone else forgets, exploits or laughs at. So the candy cane, the sweet treat we hang from the trees that nestle in the heart of our family celebrations, is a reminder that Christmas is the birthday of Jesus. And it is a sign that Jesus wants us to live as he lived, radically, giving everything we've got to help the helpless and build an open, inclusive, compassionate and truly loving society. That's the sweetest gift we could ever give. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
as we remember God's gift to us of his Son, we pray as our Saviour himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God, who is fullness of love, dwell in our hearts. Christ, who holds all things together, bring peace in our world. Spirit, who awakens us to life's mystery, fill us with your eternal vision. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, those you love and those for whom you pray, this night and always. Amen.